Boatyards and boat owners can play an important role in preserving water quality and healthy marine life, especially during work on boat hulls that are coated with anti-fouling biocide paints. When a boat is stored in water, hull paint touch-up or repainting is typically needed every few years, if not more frequently. This requires removal of some or all of the old anti-fouling paint. The purpose of this video is to, first, inform boaters and boat yards about impacts to marine species from anti-fouling paints, and second, share simple best practices and specific Washington State permit requirements to contain, manage, and dispose of the removed anti-fouling paint wastes. The Washington State Boat Yard General Permit states that permittees must collect and manage paint dust, flakes, chips, scrapings, and other solids to prevent their release into the environment and entry into waters of the state. Here's a message from the Washington State Department of Ecology about anti-foulant paints and paint removal. Many boaters use copper-based anti-fouling paints to reduce the buildup of algae and other marine growth on boat hulls. While less common, some anti-fouling paints include other toxic biocides such as zinc pyrothione and ergorol. All of these biocides are regulated by federal and state governments as pesticides. To prevent fouling, these biocides are designed to leach out of hull paint. So if you put a lot of boats together, for example, in a small marina, there's a potential for these biocides to build up in marina waters. Biocides can affect nearby marine life, like mussels and marine plants, that are a critical part of the food chain. Marinas also offer an attractive environment for marine animals to breed, and the early life stages of these animals can be very sensitive to biocides and other pollutants. These unintended toxic effects can be far worse when paint dust and particles from hull sanding or grinding reach the water. This old paint debris will continue to leach biocide and adds to what's already coming from boats at the dock. That's why it's really, really important to capture and contain paint debris when you're working on a boat and to dispose of it properly. Ecology urges all boat yards to stay up to date with the boat yard general permit requirements and to follow best management practices during boat maintenance. Do-it-yourselfers should also learn and use these best practices. And remember that these biocides are toxic to humans too, so be sure to read paint labels carefully and use the right personal protective equipment during both paint removal and application. Thanks. The Clean Boating Foundation in Washington State, who certifies boat yards under their Clean Boat Yard program, promotes conducting all paint removal projects at a permitted boat yard, utilizing staff and contractors trained to properly remove, control, and dispose of wastes. Here's more about their Clean Boat Yard program. The Clean Boating Foundation launched the Certified Boat Yard Program in 2011. It's the keystone to our nonprofit organization. We work shoulder to shoulder with boat yards from around the area to ensure that they're complying with the nation's boat yard permit. So we have legally required items in that checklist, and then we also have program required items in that checklist. And once they meet that distinction, they can be awarded our Certified Leadership Clean Boat Yard uh, status or the regular uh, Certified Boat Yard status as well. Paint removal plays a big part of the certifi certification process. We spend a lot of time during the permit working through the best management practices. For example, a legal, legally required item on the checklist is ensuring that a dustless vacuum sander is used throughout the process of paint removal. That's a, like I said, legally required piece. On the programmatic required piece that you'll find just within the certification program is that the paint removal occurs indoors, and if it's not indoors, a tarp is used. Another requirement involves at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that all the dangerous waste that comes from paint is picked up. So that can be debris or dust or chips. So that needs to be tidied up before uh, the end of each shift. And then we also want a proper disposal of paint dust. That's considered dangerous waste in our state of Washington. And we wanna make sure that that is handled in a responsible manner. All that you'll find within the certified boatyard program. Because vacuum sanding is one of the most common methods used, the focus of the Best Management Practices, or BMPs, will pertain mostly to vacuum sanding. Sometimes vacuum grinding or other methods are used, and many of these best practices also apply. When methods other than vacuum sanding are used at boat yards, check with the Washington State Department of Ecology for any additional permit requirements. The BMPs presented next fall under these categories. 
oversight, pre-job planning, dustless vacuum functions and specs, worksite prep, vacuum sanding, vacuum grinding, daily cleanup, and disposal of paint dust as dangerous waste. Yards must publish a handout of their BMPs, as well as post them conspicuously, in large print at the yard, allowing easy reminders and reference for site users and staff. The BMPs ensure yards meet the Washington State permit and sometimes local requirements as well. Boat yard staff are trained to their own BMPs, but do-it-yourselfers and contractors conducting work at the yard must read and sign a BMP document assuring they understand all the BMPs and will comply. Additional important oversight activities include 1. Daily monitoring of the site activities and housekeeping. 2. Clear signage for different waste receptacles. And 3. Ensuring yard staff or approved contractors are present during any paint removal work at the site. Do-it-yourself boat owners should not conduct work when staff is not present. A BMP for pre-job planning is to meet prior to starting paint removal to review procedures. During this meeting, inspect the dustless vacuum equipment functionality and filtration capacity per Washington's general boatyard permit. This includes tight vacuum connections, dust extraction capability of 98%, 5 micron containment bag, 1 micron air filter cartridge, checking for significant debris in the air filter cartridge, and ensuring operators know how and where to dispose of full bags of paint dust. All outdoor work must block the boat over an impermeable tarp with edges and corners weighted down. Some yards require a plastic shroud around the full hull or the specific work area during paint removal. Shrouding is important when removing paint on windy days. Place a walk-off mat to clean shoes at the edge of the tarp. Once the work area is prepared and the equipment is inspected, it's time to remove the paint. Recall that the old antifoulant paint likely contains biocides that can be harmful, especially as dust particles, so don the proper personal protective equipment, including a plastic suit and respirator. So sanding in the marine environment, uh, you want to make sure that your sander uh, that you're using has dust collection. Uh, really uh, good dust collection comes directly off the bottom of the sanding pads. Uh, you'll find a hole pattern which allows uh, dust to be sucked up through the sander directly itself so it doesn't exit from below the pad. Uh, the more complex the, um, the, the pattern and the more number of holes, it often tends to be a little bit better on the uh, dust collection. When you're getting ready to sand on any project, especially one that contains heavy metal, you want to make sure that you're truly using a vacuum system as opposed to a, just a dust bag that would be attached onto the back of a sander. Uh, most of the nicer vacuums are going to have um, a way to make a really tight seal with your tool. Um, if, they, if you don't have that, make sure you get a, a very tight rubber piece or something else that's going to make an airtight seal with the tool um, and just make sure that that um, is properly attached uh, when before you go to uh, sand your piece or sand your boat. You can really limit the dust uh, that is in the environment and also then any cleanup that you'd have to do after your project. Technique is important. Never sand with the leading edge of the sander as it breaks the seal and allows dust to escape. The sander must be flat on the substrate. Be mindful of airborne dust escaping during work. If dust is being released, stop work, identify corrective actions, and clean up any dust before resuming. If the problem is not able to be corrected, shroud the hull with plastic before continuing. If vacuum grinding is the paint removal method for the hull, the Washington General Boatyard Permit requires petition to the Department of Ecology prior to conducting that work. The grinder must be shrouded and connected to the dustless vacuum that meets permit specs for suction and filtration. Dust control with grinding is especially important. This side-by-side -side comparison of non-vacuum grinder versus shrouded vacuum grinder, although the demo is on concrete and not a boat, the difference in dust control is very distinct. 
Even if a grinder is used for spot repair only, the vacuum grinder is necessary. Holding a vacuum hose up to an unshrouded grinder is not effective dust control. If the hull is unshrouded, clean the tarp up at the end of each work day. To avoid carrying dust off the tarp and possibly even into a car or home, dust off clothes, plastic suits, and shoes while still on the tarp. Then, use a floor nozzle attachment to the vacuum and clean the tarp. Alternatively, sweep up any dust and contain it in a sturdy garbage sack, sealing the bag. Next, inspect the vacuum bag and air filter to see if replacements are needed. If the vacuum is full, seal off the opening prior to removing it from the vacuum canister. All anti-fouling paint dust is assumed to be a dangerous waste in Washington State. So unless certified lab tests show a batch does not designate as a dangerous waste, it must be disposed of as such. Place spent air filters and full vacuum bags in a sturdy plastic trash bag, seal, and place in the dangerous waste receptacle at the boatyard. Do-it-yourselfers can take this material to a local household hazardous waste facility. Signage on different waste receptacles is very important, so everyone knows how and where to dispose of different types of wastes. Here are a few examples of excellent signage from Swantown Boatworks at the Port of Olympia. One Washington boatyard has found a recycler for copper-based paint sanding dust. It is not a revenue stream for them due to shipping costs, but it does save money compared to dangerous waste disposal. So we're all taking care of our boats on a regular basis, doing the maintenance that's required, and doing the maintenance properly by collecting the dust that you're, you're producing when you're sanding paint will not only save you time and money in the long run, but it'll also help protect the environment.